Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there, guys. It's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to another video. And now we're finally going to be talking today about the BBC's annual plan for 2024 and 2025. I've mentioned this in the past few videos. This is the big document they put out every year outlining where the corporation's going, how it's going to be using its money, what investments are going to be made, what cuts are going to be made, all that sort of stuff. Now, the actual full document is almost 100 pages long, and if I just read all of that to you here, we'd be here forever. So instead, from the media center, I have gotten the, the highlights page. This is just outlining the, the key points of the statement. If you like, if you want to read the full thing, it is available online readily to read, so I highly recommend you do that if you want the full shebang but it's heavy reading so let's not waste any time let's get into it it starts off by reiterating the three key points that were made by tim davy the director general outlining the three things the bbc aims to deliver which is pursuing truth with no agenda by reporting fearlessly and fairly backing the best british storytelling by investing in homegrown talent and creativity and bringing people together by connecting everyone to admissible content three very valid things harking to the core principles of what the corporation should be about whether or not they'll be successful over the next few years that remains to be seen. I'm hopeful that they will be. In the year ahead, we'll continue our work to reflect, represent and serve all audiences through the best British storytelling as part of our Across the UK plans. Network radio programming and teams will continue moving out of London and we will create a new network audio production hub across sites in Glasgow, Edinburgh and Belfast. And this is a really good move. I think to really represent all breadths of the UK, yes, you've got to have bases in different parts of the UK and not just England, including Scotland, including Northern Ireland and including Wales. As we transform the BBC and evolve as a digital-led broadcaster, we will continue improving personalization across BBC services, making it easier for audiences to connect to the breadth and depth of our content and ensure they can access it whenever and however they want it. This includes shifting our news resources to focus more on online breaking news, high impact investigations and forensic verification. Now I must say, the BBC News app, which is what I use primarily when accessing the news, does work quite well. It's very easy to read. Again, I'm someone without the best eyesight. It's very easy to read, very easy to digest the content there. The live pages they do with live updates when there's big events going on, I find that really useful as well. That's a really good idea. I do hope, I mean, they're saying they're going to improve the personalization. I hope they can adapt it more i think the search function for articles could be refined there's not really like a, a a good filter system on that at the minute there's still a few bugs in there times where it freezes up and i'm talking on the mobile app here so these things can be remedied but yeah hopefully if they invest in that more it'll be an even more streamlined more useful experience and let me tell you reading a news app that doesn't involve ads popping up in any way is, is so great. I hate going onto websites, especially on my phone, where immediately I'm starting to read, then an ad pops up. It's so frustrating. So if you haven't got the BBC News app on your phone, I would recommend it. We will establish new partnerships that can allow us to reach new talent and access funding to make the best possible content for audiences. Highlights which support focus on our three essential roles in 2024-25 include unparalleled coverage of elections in the UK and around the world, where pursuing truth and countering disinformation will be critical. This includes the local elections in England during May, the US presidential election in November, and the anticipated UK general election later this year. And I've got to say, the, the election coverage I've watched from the BBC, whether that be US ones or stuff here in the UK, is second to none, not just with the broadcasting talent they use to do it, but in also the way they report the elections, how they get the information coming in. It's And yes, I have tried others don't accuse me of not doing i've i've tried watching it uh sky i use sky for one of the elections i didn't find that as as easy to engage with and other sites as well itv channel 4 bbc for me elections wise has the best coverage a wide range of dramas and comedies from across the uk including the return of blue lights in northern ireland the scottish drama granite harbour and new comedies dinosaur and mammoth the welsh drama lost boys and fairies and the return of doctor who we will also be returning to the scottish highlands for the third series of the traitor so announcing some big programs there some big names like doctor who the traitors and all that sort of stuff so that's reassuring an unmissable summer of sport to bring people together with the men's european football championship wimbledon the hundred and the summer olympic games in paris i'm a big fan of the olympics can't wait for them to start live events only found on the bbc including eurovision radio one's big weekend from luton glastonbury and the 2024 proms all really big music events particularly glastonbury i always feel that's been a, a big coup for the bbc as is eurovision of course we will celebrate the 100th anniversary of education at the bbc and mark the 25th anniversary of bbc bite size with a three-year six million pounds investment that's really cool honestly i didn't think bbc bite size was still going i remember it being a resource when i was a kid not when i was able to use much our internet wasn't 
wasn't the best back then, but I do remember it being around. And there's actually a bit more to the BBC Bite Size story and how it sort of gets the benefits from this annual plan, but we'll talk more on that a little bit later, so stick around. The plan also sets out how we will further respond to an evolving media market and pressure on funding caused by high inflation and constraints on the license fee. This includes BBC Studios doubling 2021-22 commercial revenues by 2027-28 and fulfilling its mandate to deliver long-term value to the BBC. Samir Shah, the BBC chairman, says this is a plan the board is putting its full weight behind and it is one that gives me great confidence in the year ahead. It's bold in its mission, ambitious in its goals and clear-eyed in the face of increasing financial and competitive challenges. Tim Davey, who's the director general, says this is going to be a significant year for the BBC. Our content offer is packed with major sporting and music events, exciting new dramas and unrivaled coverage of elections from across the world. I think they, yes, they are doing a good job of highlighting the, the assets there, particularly focusing on sport, on music, the dramas and coverage of elections, etc. It will also be a year of embracing reform and innovation as we deliver value for all, focusing on pursuing truth with no agenda, backing the British story sling. Okay, so he's reiterating the three points there. From the press office, these are the facts and figures. These are the raw numbers of it all, right? So the BBC is used by nearly nine in 10 adults on average per week and by virtually the whole country every month. 95% uh, access, uh, adult-wise at least, access the BBC on a, what is that, on a per week and by monthly basis. So... For, you know, for those who say, I don't use the BBC, I think you're in the minority there by the look of it. The BBC is the only UK brand to appear in the top 10 for online brands in the UK, which is an average monthly reach of 76%. So what it means by that is I think the word in there is a bit clumsy. So just looking at UK and what online brands come up, I guess, in uh, search results or like most accessed, the BBC out of those top 10 is the only UK based brand to appear. Audiences continue to spend more time watching BBC TV and iPlayer on average per week per person than they spend on Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Prime combined. So more people are spending time watching BBC TV or the iPlayer every week per person than those that spend on those streaming services. Well, you might say those streaming services offer better content or you may use them, but it, if we're going on these facts and figures, then the BBC is not doing too bad. In 2023, the BBC had 7 out of 10 of the most watched shows in the UK across all broadcasters and streamers. I can believe that because when you look at the uh, British Audience Research Board or BARB for the most viewed programmes, the BBC is constantly coming top. Like, it occupies a lot of the top 10, often takes the number one spot. ITV do it sometimes as well, but to say that it had 7 out of the 10 most watched shows in the UK, I can believe that in a second. The BBC brings UK arts, music and culture to an audience of around 22 million UK adults on average per week. In audio, 31.7 million adults listen to BBC Radio on average per week, still more than any other broadcast radio company or on-demand player. And this is one where I've chatted with friends who say, oh, I don't use the BBC, I don't watch BBC TV. But then when I bring up radio, they do hold their hands up and say, okay, I do have like the BBC Sounds app, or I listen to Radio 1, Radio 2, etc. I understand some of the services offer a more niche offering, shall we say, when the further down you go the radio, but it still seems that a, a vast majority of adults, or a lot of them, 31.7 million, listen to BBC Radio, one of the stations per week. Radio 2 is the UK's number one station overall. Radio 4, the number one speech station, by some margins, so for things like audio dramas and other things like that. And 6 Music, the biggest digital-only service. So, big up BBC Radio. BBC Sounds hit a record 5 million accounts listening weekly in early 2024, with a mix of live and on-demand content. And yes, I know, trust me, I know the hassle of, like, making an account when you join a website. We've all done it. We all hate it. It's a faff. But considering you don't have to pay, and it's just so they can... I guess keep a track of like the accounts that they have. 5 million for early 2024. If that keeps going, that's not a bad showing. BBC iPlayer also had a record breaking start to 2024, with January its best ever month as 16 million accounts used the service on average per week. It's considering that it's still getting its best ever month, you know, how far are we into its life now? 16 years, something like that. 16 million accounts, great job. It seems like this strategy of pushing things on the iPlayer is working decently. The number of accounts using BBC Online overall on average per week grew 11% year on year. The BBC is the UK's most used news service, used by over three quarters of adults on average per week. I can definitely believe that. And globally, the BBC has remained the world's most popular online news brand, drawing in 1 billion visits. 1 billion in December 2024 across all of bbc.co.uk or bbc.com. 1 billion visits. In one month, that is that is a big number. And again, it just shows, I think, the, the brand status BBC has abroad. Whether you like it or not, there are people abroad. And I have friends from all across the world, you know, America, at Norway, Sweden, Australia, 
Thailand, you name, you name a country, because going to a university where there was a lot of international students coming, got friends from all over the world, right? And they always say when we discuss the BBC that in their territory or amongst their family or group of friends or whatever, the BBC is seen as this trusted brand. Maybe not the most powerful brand, maybe not the biggest brand, but it's seen as a trusted brand. And then further content highlights here. So Strictly Come Dancing celebrates 20 years when it returns in the autumn. That'll be a big celebration for sure. And Gladiators is going to return to Sheffield Arena for a second series. That was inevitable with how well that was doing. And EastEnders will celebrate its 40th anniversary in early 2025. So they are planning some celebrations for it, at the very least. I think people were doubting. But yeah, 40 years in 2025. We'll see what they do. The BBC News Investigations Unit is going to bring together existing talent and creating new reporting roles to deliver investigations across BBC News, including on Panorama, BBC I and File on 4. BBC Verify will launch globally in multiple countries. I think that'll be really important. I've already talked about what I feel is the importance of BBC Verify and the crucial role it plays in the age of disinformation that we live in. So to see that roll out across multiple countries, I think is a great plan. In BBC Local, coverage of Bradford City of Culture 2025. Yes, always good to see that promoted. For CBBS and iPlayer, an exciting new series to introduce coding to four to sixes from the number blocks and alpha blocks stable. I understand coding has become like a really important thing in education in like the last decade or so. It was something I could have only dreamed of when I was a kid. And CBBC's new drama adaptation, Crongton, for the 10 to 12s will air. And Nick Hill and Jay CBBS brings to life the customs and traditions of South Asian and British cultures for the 4 to 6s. I think that's great that introducing kids to an old variety of cultures is only a good thing. To let kids learn about the world. I'm not saying, you know, shove it down their throats, but to just, open, you know, see, hey, this is what people do around the world. That ain't a bad thing. So those are the highlights presented from the media center. That link on that same page will take you to the full plan. But I want to draw your attention to this article that was published recently by Kids Screen. And they say within that plan, which of course is neglected to mention, I think they only mentioned the highlights really, but there's going to be fewer first run commissions planned for CBBS and CBBC this year. It says, according to the BBC's annual plan, total hours of first-run commissions for children's channels, CBBC and CBBS, will decline this year, but BBC Bite Size, the online educational resource for 4- to 16-year-olds, is poised for growth after securing a three-year, $7.5 million top-up investment. Okay, they've converted that to dollars, but again, around the same £6 million we talked about. The Beeb has earmarked the extra funds to mark the 25th anniversary of Bite Size and support more generations of students, beginning with improving content discovery, content recommendation, and self-curation. That was said by Tim Davey in a statement. In the short term, Bite Size is rolling out more exam style quizzes, which proved popular with students during the 2023 exam period, along with additional physics and chemistry podcasts in partnership with BBC Sounds. Now, this is, I think, actually a really good move. Now, as I say, Bite Size was around when I was growing up in the, you know, 2000s and stuff like that. And I remember using it very sparingly. I think we used it at school a couple of times. And back then, you know, this was the early days. But by the time I was doing my, you know, exams for GCSEs and stuff by the early 2010s, whilst internet had increased where it was more viable, I'd argue back then, I didn't really view bite size as an option. I do think in those early days, like particularly the 2000s and early 2012s, whilst it offered those resources, I always felt it was targeted more towards like primary school age children rather than teenagers. And teenagers would feel that using bite size wasn't like, this sounds silly for exams, but like the cool thing to use. Like when I was revising for my exams, it was mainly the, the textbooks you were given with, the work you were doing throughout the year, and then just certain books. If it was on internet stuff, we didn't really get recommended that because they'd say, well, these aren't approved by like the exam board or they aren't recommended by us. So using the internet, apart from a few things here and there, wasn't something we really did. But having Bite Size now is this really credible, really useful thing for kids of all ages, as it says from the four to 16s, is great. It says that during that 2023 exam period, these exam style quizzes were really useful. And I think for revision purposes, that is essential. So I'm glad to see that that's been a success and they're only going to push forward with that. And you might say, well, why is the BBC funneling it into this educational tool rather than, you know, more money for BBC One, BBC Two, that, you know, the various TV channels, the radio stations? I guess as the Director General said, they've got to adapt and, you know, there's got to be some reform there. And if they're proving to be some sort of leader in the online educational space for kids who need to revise for exams or just study for coursework, if they're, if they're becoming a leader or pushing forward in that, then, yeah, why wouldn't they invest more in it? I think that's a great idea. 
On the TV side of things, CBBC's Bite Size Morning Block will continue to broadcast at least 45 hours of formal education content along with factual series. And to mark the 100th anniversary of education at the BBC, a special live lesson will be broadcast on CBBC, an online teaching resource platform, BBC Teach. Oh, they've got one for teachers as well. I didn't know that. Additionally, BBC Children's and Education will work with BBC Studios this year to make a handful of small pilot tests to test the effectiveness of the Bite Size brand and its educational content in international markets. Now, this will be an interesting one. Would Bite Size be a success abroad? I'm not too sure. You know, teaching styles can vary very differently from country to country. And whilst I don't doubt the BBC's efficiency to launch something like Bite Size abroad, I think focusing that investment on the UK for now, and I'm not saying this from an insular perspective, but I think really keep cementing the brand here in the UK, but maybe try it in a market. It doesn't say which market they'd be trying. I'd imagine like the big ones like the US, Australia, etc. But we don't know as of yet. Despite the targeted investments, CBBC and CBBS will both take a hit this year as the uh, only channels from the broadcaster to see a reduction in hours of first-run commissions. 2% less for CBBC and 5% less for CBBS. So yes, there is actually a negative to this, unfortunately, regarding the children's strand. CBBC will add approximately 245 hours of first-run content as part of its 5,500 total programming hours this year. 3,600 of those will be on TV, and then 1,900 of those will be on the iPlayer. So it's saying then even with that total programming and this leans into what we talked about in one of our last videos more content for the next financial year the vast majority of it is going to be aired at tv as opposed to the iplayer this sort of goes against this move to online that cbbc have been touting that will happen in 2025 and that's probably still going to happen but considering more than half of, of well more than half actually of the uh, total programming hours are going to be dedicated on TV as opposed to the iPlayer, it's an interesting figure to think about. And the plan is for CBBS to take on about 24 first-run titles, comprising 95 hours and air around 5,000 total programming hours. 4,500 of those on TV and 500 on the iPlayer. Okay, so 90% of its total programming hours are going to be on TV for CBBS as opposed to the iPlayer. And again, I think that makes the most sense for the youngest demographic who will probably be relying on their parents to you know, turn on CBBS for them. A lot of them are going to go for the traditional telly route as opposed to the iPlayer. And that's still clearly a strong demand because those without internet but maybe access to TV, they're going to access CBBS through this route as well. And they're saying that CBBS isn't going to move online. That's always been said as far back as 2022. So keeping the majority of hours on TV again feeds into that. It just makes sense. The reduction in first run hours marks a shift from 2023 when the broadcaster increased kids commissions by 23%. So kids content is going down and this is a sad reflection of course on the state of kids TV particularly in this country with the demise of CITV the writing probably got spelled on the wall for a lot of others obviously Tiny Pop is moving off terrestrial TV we talked about that and others are probably going to follow suit in the near future so I, I don't blame the BBC for doing this it is a shame but there is still content coming, first run commissions and programming, but it's just less, it's reduced. Looking ahead, the Beeb is expecting its operating deficit to increase by 40% to $620 million next year, which could spell more trouble for its homegrown kids' content growth. And that, well, yeah, that is true. If the BBC is facing a bigger deficit, their ability to commission and make first-run programming, particularly for kids' content, but on the, on the whole, is going to be diminished. And then finally, before we wrap up, I want to take you to this article from the Daily Mail, which again is going off the uh, the plan that was published. And it's saying it's going to use repeats and foreign shows to fill the gaps on TV after plans to cut 100 hours worth of new shows. So it's claiming that the corporation's commitment to first run original drama is going to drop by 13% to 350 hours, whilst original entertainment and factual entertainment shows will be down by 15% to 850 hours. When asked whether it would be using more repeats and foreign acquisitions to fill the lost hours of original TV in the schedules, the BBC would only say that overall it will be investing in high impact content. Well, that doesn't necessarily spell too well when you break it down like that. I think one of the strengths of the BBC that it's had during the era of television over the last several decades is the original drama that it commissions. There's a reason why British dramas full stop are considered some of the best in the world. And that is down to the drama commissioned by broadcasters like the BBC and ITV, etc, etc. So the fact that they're being vague about, you know, that repeats or uh, foreign imports are going to replace that original drama. The fact they're being vague on that is slightly worrying. One of the high profile series getting the axe is the popular comedy series Motherland. The show has been cut after three seasons despite winning the BAFTA award for best scripted comedy in 2022. 
And sadly, you know, we're only going to be seeing more of this. As the Director General said in his recent statement, more and more big shows or, or there's going to be big announcements of shows coming to an end. And I think that's going to sweep across the board, whether that's a show that's only been on the air for one series or whether that's a long running show. There's lots of talk that Casualty might be coming to an end after it celebrates its 40 years in 2026. We don't really know that yet, but... Sadly, you know, even if popular programs like Motherland can be axed after three seasons of relative strength, it does make you wonder about the future. Also weighing in was the current showrunner of Doctor Who, Russell T Davies, who said the end of the BBC is undoubtedly on its way and called for it to join forces with Disney to produce the series. And yes, that's been widely publicised that Russell has said Disney was needed as a co-producer to get it to compete with the streaming giants, to give it that budget it so rightly deserves. And we'll see when that series airs in May. I'm personally really looking forward to it. It looks like a really great time and a reinvention for Doctor Who, as it always has done over the last 60 years. But if even Russell T, one of the most high profile people in drama in television at the moment is is sort of throwing his hands up and saying well look the bbc is going to end at some point you know the end of it's on its way with the writings on the wall so to speak that's that ain't a good indication of its future it is understood that bbc reductions mean that overall there's going to be 105 hours less of original tv programming in the year ahead and honestly that is a great shame obviously we are still going to get original programming that is all but confirmed but to get so much less of it that's just it's just sad, man, because it's seeing how the BBC is being strangleholded with the cuts it's having to make. It's just, it's a sad state of both where UK traditional television is at and the need to reform and change, but also the financial hardships that the BBC is facing. So overall, those are some key points that have stemmed from the publication of the annual plan. Now, as I've said, I've just tried to give you the highlights and even some of the lowlights published here. The full document is almost 100 pages long. I just simply couldn't go through every single page here in one video because it would literally be hours long and probably be very boring. But if you want to find out more of what was posted there, then you can do that. You can go and check that out yourself. It is readily available. But I hope you've enjoyed us going through some of the key points here, both positive and negative, and ultimately just the kind of year that the BBC is going to have looking ahead of it. One of savings, one of things being cut, but also new things still coming, new investments, new programs, just not nearly as much as there has been in years previous. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it. It really does help us out. Subscribe as well. We'd love to have you aboard. And in the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Thank you to all our patrons for supporting the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dord Khan, Liam Demain, Trev Hughes, AJ Mac 200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, Evan Hart 38, Jen, and Ted Elliott, our AMTV staff members.